The ranch is heading to Las Vegas for the National Finals Rodeo. Let's do this. All right. This is the most famous barrel man in the history of bull riding. How about that for an introduction? Flint Rasmussen is here on the ranch stage. Everybody clap. This is awesome. Now, Yay. I can... Pulling them in. Uh, selling tickets. I cannot understand... Uh, I can't understand why people might not recognize you because, well, you used to dress a bit differently. Well, and I'm... Actually, and I'm dressed differently today, too. This is my... Uh, I know it's... You know, we're on the radio. This is my anti-rodeo announcer garb for my... I do a show every day here, uh, my Outside the Barrel show. 19th right. year I've done it. And, and so I did the... It's casual Monday or Tuesday. We don't. We never know what day it is I in Las Vegas. I would call so. it the channeling Johnny Cash day. And kind of we goth. like it. I'm goth. <laughs> goth but country. Yeah, it, it's funny. Through the years, though, I've done enough shows on stage and out of the rodeo clown barrel man stuff that people stop me and say hello i like it here i i like when that happens it it creates the illusion that i actually have friends which i <laughs> so i like that yeah well you have impacted so many people's lives some of them even in a positive way yeah. which is wonderful now last time i talked to you i think we figured out was back in may because that was right before your grand farewell to arena work with the pbr right. i can't i was trying to think it was a pbr world finals what is yes, there yes. yeah I was so thinking, it's been six months ago okay yeah that was kind of my farewell tour had a big big weekend at the pbr world finals last time on the major tour of the pbr so i've it was time uh, i was i like i tell people i was done uh you know you get to a point emotionally physically a lot of it has to do with and so i i've always had these sorts of things that i've done stage shows uh, hosting gigs um so i'm transitioning into that and i i've got asked probably 200 times how's retirement well it's <laughs> more of a transition uh, i'm going to be uh, you know doing some creative and production stuff with pbr which will be announced so still working just a little different role i guess well last time you were in at the ranch studio in fort worth you did tell me that your knees hurt are your knees, My knees better hurt. no <laughs> that's it's funny you know when you uh, I, I use the analogy when you see an nfl football player and they play up to a point, and you see them a year and a half later, and you say, how the heck was he playing football? Because I think when you stop, things start, you start to realize. Honestly, when I really stopped and now kind of stepped back, I realized that, you know, I I jumped up and down and ran and danced and jumped off stages and fences for a long time, and all of those little pains are coming to fruition a little bit, and I'm trying to stay in shape well, and um, I hope I'm young for my age, but uh, no second thoughts. I did, you know, when when you're finished, you're finished, and unless uh, yeah. you are George Strait or well, say, a, the, you know, a I don't know if you know this about George Strait. If you've ever seen him in concert, he don't dance around very much. <laughs> That's but, a good point. However, he has, he and Garth Brooks have proven the coming out of retirement money is pretty dang good. So uh, we'll yeah, see. Yeah. like new Coke. You remember how yeah, well that uh, worked exactly, out? Yes, exactly, exactly, yes. yes. So your new role at the PBR, uh, does it make you miss just a little bit when you are doing the broadcast, you're calling rodeos, and you're looking down at the arena, and you're looking at these clowns and barrel men and deep and dark in your brain you're uh, thinking i could do better i i think oh i always say <laughs> you say that uh, out loud. i say that a lot uh, not really and, and this winter i'm not really going to be on the broadcast team i it, we're going to be in a creative role a little bit but it's funny it's a good question because i always i think from for the rest of my life i'll look at a situation in the arena and go this is what i would do in that situation <laughs> Uh, if if a person in the crowd instantly my brain goes, ooh, you could take this and make that person feel good by doing this. That'll always happen. But si honestly, and I haven't been out of it all that long. I haven't looked out in the arena and gone, dang it, I wish I was out there. Oh, that looks so fun. I I haven't. Well, and and that means I think I did it the right way. 
yeah, I guess. Yeah, it shows yeah. that your timing was absolutely perfect. Now, yeah. you have brought up a couple of times that you're going to be doing some creative things with the PBR, and I believe you used the phrase earlier that will be announced. But seeing as you are here in this in this situation. And I see my boss is on your list of people you're going to interview. So Yes, next, actually, yeah. uh, the PBR president, Sean Gleason. But since you are among such close friends, I thought maybe you could give us just a little idea of what might well, be coming. Well, I, I can tell you this. It um, Now, I can still hold on to, like, the PBR has been great through my career. They see that there's a value in me coming to the NFR and being a presence here. I talk about PBR. I talk about rodeo. So there's a value. Hopefully I can hold on to this stuff that I do for these 10 days in Vegas. But it, it will probably be more behind the scenes. And I'm kind of ready for, for that. I, I love even sitting here with people walking by. And you know this being on the air. There's a little void in us that we need to do that. So if I can do it once in a while. But a lot of behind the scenes stuff. I, I won't be quite as visible. But I would honestly like to always be in some form a face of the PBR, mm -hmm. whether it's a reference, whether it's making a difference in uh, doing creative things in a show and advising on that. Mm -hmm. I, I'd like to do that, but it probably will be not quite as visible as what I've been before. Well, the PBR, it is so broad, and I think you can reach a point in an area, whatever area, of whatever career it is, where you feel like, hey, I have done all I can pretty much do in this arena, no pun intended, yeah. and then so I'm going to go over here and, and try this and see how this is, and then you learn a whole new aspect of it. Yeah, and I have seen... I've been involved in the production of PBR shows for tw 20 years. Yeah. And I've observed and watched and been a part of creating all of that. And I've seen the greatest bull riders in the world for all these years from a really great seat. <laughs> I, I know what, what people respond to in a crowd. I know how, how sponsor, sponsor activations, quote unquote, in an arena work. So yep. I think I have a lot to bring as far as a knowledge of hold on that doesn't work. We tried it 10 years ago. Let's go this direction. I think there's right. a lot of that. I hope. I hope I can offer some of that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And we are very lucky to have you, whether you are on the dirt or behind the scenes. And what I love, though, is your Western world and the life you have built around it professionally. It's not just professional. You live out in Montana still, right? I do. Um, I'm a Montana guy, born and raised in Montana. My um, my girls had their college completely paid for at Montana State through rodeo scholarships. Nice. Uh, my daughter, Shelby, my oldest, works for a company called Learfield Sports. Um, they've started a college rodeo division helping universities promote their programs. She's kind of heading that up. My other daughter, who is a college national champion in rodeo, t three days later got on a plane went to Boston. She's still there. So... It's this whole world of, you know, being on the radio and now they do it too when people need interviews. Walking around here, it's made my girls well-rounded. That's, you know, it really has exposed them to a lot of things. They've traveled. They've been everywhere in the country. And I think it's made them better as well. Well, they are very lucky to be as well-rounded. Just having a father like you who's able to guide them and, and help them see a bigger picture. You yeah. know, I was thinking about you out in Montana. and this I is know you were. <laughs> oh, yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah, so uh, I was thinking, though, yeah, I don't get to talk to that many people who are actually true Montana Montanaites, okay. yeah. whatever you call them. And the question I have is, obviously, Yellowstone has made an impact on the area. And the question is, is it getting busier with real cowboy cowgirls? Or is it getting busier with, hey, that looks cool. Let me go grab a cowboy hat. Oh, my, it's, it's, uh, now, there are, there's a lot of Montana that isn't getting busier. The sad, what I consider the sad part about Montana, there's places like, Bozeman and Kalispell, all that stuff that looks like Yellowstone yeah. is booming. And it's not, listen, there's not rodeo cowboys sitting here today going, I want to move to Montana because of Yellowstone. They already have their stuff. Right. It is filled with people who, you know, want to experience what's seen on Yellowstone. But the sad thing is, like, I'm from a little town 
you know, far away from there. Yeah. And it's struggling. Uh, enrollments are down in schools. Uh, stores are boarded up. So it's hard. That's a, a weird contradiction with Montana. Mm -hmm. It's booming mm -hmm. and real estate prices are skyrocketing, but then the, the true little ag towns are really struggling. So what's that called? It's a dichotomy of things. <laughs> but uh, it is ironic that John Dutton, the supposed governor of Montana, right, right, on yes. a TV show is battling against the development of Montana. And he does this on a show that has done more to develop Montana than anything in the history. <laughs> so it's weird. Not all Montanans are big fans. That is yeah. so interesting. I have never thought yeah. about the irony of that. But yeah, it's I, ironic. I so. love that. Yeah. You know, it is always so fun to talk to you. And I know a big part of that is because you're often on my side of the mic and doing the interviewing. Yeah. But then you've been interviewed a ton because, well, you're you. So which do you like better? You like asking the questions, answering uh, the questions? There's a reward in doing a good interview. You know that. Which, um, which side? There's a reward in interviewing. Yes. In being the interviewer. Yes. When you when you turn off the microphone and set it down and say, "Oh, that was really that." Was, and I love. <laughs> I I think I've always looked at things in a different way in life. You know that from interviewing me. Mm -hmm. But I think it's nice to be interviewed by someone when it's not just close ended. Okay, how'd you get started? Hey, what you know? Yes. Let us tell a story. So that's rewarding. Like, I, I've always liked coming on with you because we kind of just have a conversation. Well, and that's it, what it's really that's supposed, what it's supposed to, be. to be. Yeah, yeah. And, and I feel for the folks who have a list of questions because they may be new at it. But you're right. You don't, we have no idea no. where our conversation will go no. when, when you're, we start. You're probably like me. I have a little index card. I write down little <laughs> topics. Yeah, like little but, topics. And wherever it goes... If we still have some left, then we did good. We exactly. did well, you know. So yeah. So how do we? How do we think it went? What I do don't you think? know. I think. Uh, look at we're pulling them in. I, oh yeah. Yeah. I, there are at least four. I think people it went well. There. I, you and I, we always pick up where we left off. We don't. We do. We don't have to talk about meaningless <laughs> stuff. There's things mean something in my world, career, how I look at things, and if we cover that, then it's fun for me. Well, you are one of a kind. You've always been, like you indicated, a little bit left of center, which I think is a huge part of your success. You don't want to be like everybody yeah. else. There are not other barrel men like Flint. There's only one Flint. Yeah. I don't know. I think that's the first time I've ever heard the word left described in how <laughs> I am. But okay, right of center. Right of center, there, maybe. There, yeah. there we go. Um, I hope so. I I realize now stepping, I was really invested from the, till, until the last minute I was in the arena, what was on my mind was being better and doing a good job. So I never really got to step back and enjoy it all. And looking at it now, I think I did okay. <laughs> I think I did some stuff that a lot of people never did in the arena and till the day I was done and I'm good with that. You revolutionized the sport. You made it something different and bigger than just bull riding. You made you made it fun regardless of the event because you captivated people so much. And then you've had this success on the other side where you've got these daughters who are semi following in yeah. your footsteps. You've obviously done a good job with them. So congratulations to you, Flynn. Thank and you. thank you so much because I know you had to walk over from the other part of the convention center with the knees and all. And well, that, with all know. my security that I had. <laughs> <laughs> I really was worried about you getting no, through. But then it's I love why I hadn't uh, ventured out. I've been here a while, and and uh, it was good to get out and go for a walk and see some new area for sure. And anything for you, because as you know, we're adorable together. We, we are are yeah. adorable together. In fact, let's capture that in a photo in just a minute, shall we? Yes, we shall.